Okay, so we've got um, we've got this lesson done where we've got the um, class variables. Let's start with a, with a new lesson. We need to head our way towards the standard template library, and to do that, uh, we need a few lessons. We'll, we'll start first of all with functional template. So we'll get rid of everything in main, and we'll just start again. So int main. And what we'd like to do is add together two numbers. So we'll have number one, and we'll make that equal to, I don't know, 23. And we'll have number two, have that equal to 17. That's fair enough. Um, and we'll have number three, which will be the answer. Uh, start that off with zero. And we're going to say that we're going to have uh, number answer equals add nums, number one, number two, let's write that now, that function, so we'll have a new function, it's going to be an int function, it's called add nums, it takes an integer for the first input, and it takes an integer for the second input, and then it just returns those two numbers added together. So input one plus, oh, I don't have them there. Put one plus input two. Perhaps the world's simplest function. Okay, oh, yeah, well, obviously we'll have to output these things. So it's going to be number one. Um, and then we add number two. And that's going to equal, oops, so this fun, uh, we'll get to functional templates in a second, that's going to equal number the answer. So hopefully that's all making a bit of sense, let's give that a run, hopefully it'll work. Expected, oh yes, right. Cross fingers, lovely jubbly, that'll do for me. Now that all works fine, that works great in fact. Succeed. Great, it works fantastic. What if we, though, we want doubles instead? What if we don't, we don't want to use ints? What if we want to use doubles? And we'll just put a couple of meaningful double values in here. I'll put a zero in there. And let's run this now. Now, we, you can see we actually have succeeded. We've actually got a, a response. Now, all, all the versions of C++ would have uh, would have hated this. And they would have said, um, oh, that's no good. But what's happened in this case is add nums has done, it, has done the best it can. So it's sent off a double. That's been interpreted as an int. It's sent off another double. Again, that's been interpreted as an int. And an int has been returned. And stuck into n ants. Now, if you notice here, 23.16 plus 17.34 should actually come back as 40.5. So we're missing a 0.5 because this has all been sort of um, turned into an int, if you kind of see what I mean. So what we'd actually what we'd actually need to do in real life is we'd actually need to change all of this to To do this and now should get back the correct answer there we go um, and if we do if we wanted to go back to the integer situation we'd need to have something that's kind of overloaded uh, as returning an integer so we can again get the correct 40.5 coming out because we're using the the double thing there. Uh, if we change all this back to ints again, then we are using the int one. So there's no problem there with, with that. So in one case we're using the int function, so in the other case we're using the double function. Now, what if we're using, uh, later on when we get to objects and we get to the standard template library and, and various things to do with the vectors, what if we've got hundreds of things which we could add together? We're going to have to write hundreds and hundreds of different functions. 
Is there an easier way than right? I mean, it, we might need to do another one for floats. So we might need to do one for floats. And we might need to do one for longs. I won't bother typing out the one for longs. Uh, and shorts uh, and mixtures as well. Mixtures of ints and floats and, and, and floats and doubles. Is there an easier way than writing out for much longer functions than this? Um, something that, which can just be done once. Yes, there is, and it's called templates. So let's build up a function template and so we can get rid of all of this extra fluff. Now, again, we are heading towards the standard template library. First thing we need to do, keyword, template. And then we write class. And we can write something like, um, you can pretty much put whatever you like, but by convention it's capitalized, so... I'll put say input num, and then what you do is you just wherever it says int, you just put input num like that. Now let's just show it working with ints. So we've got this um, function call. What's it calling? We don't know. What this will do is it will go, aha, I've worked out that that's an int because I know that that's an int. I've worked out that that's an int because I know that that's an int. I know that that's an int, and that's an int, so what I will do is I will basically turn imp num into int int int, I know these are keywords, none of this is going to work, and int, that's what it's sort of doing. Let's just put all that back again. So I need to put all these back together again. So this template will go, ah, I know what it I know what it's trying to do, so I'll build one. I'll build one. And you can see we get back the correct thing. And now what we can also do is we could change these to doubles. And without having to write a double function, I can run this again. Super trooper, look at that, 40.5. Because what C has done is gone, ah, okay. I want to call a function. I don't have. I have a template thing, but I don't have a proper function. But I know that that's a double. I know that that's a double, and I know they want back an answer, which is a double. So what I will do is I will essentially stick double in there, double in there, double in there, double in there, and build that function for them. Now that's pretty nice. It means you know there could be hundreds of different types this could apply to, but we just need to put it in once um, as a template. Now I just want to say that typically you'll see this written as a capital T, um, which I, you know, when I first kind of got my grips grips to this, it was very confusing. But you will see this as a capital T. So the T stands for template. So again, it works the same. So again, change these to floats. Float, float, give it a run. Works fine because float has been stuck in there, there, and there. Now, I haven't actually checked this compiler, but I'll check it now. What if I do a long there, change it to 17. Now the other compiler I was working with this should yeah this shouldn't work because no matching function call because what we're looking for is we're looking for something that takes a float there and takes a long there and we can't do that we can't have a float in t and a long in t it must be either a float or a long in t so we can't build because it, you know, it doesn't know what to return. Does it return a float or a long? It just doesn't know. So what we've got to do in that case is there, there is a way around that. Um, what we can do is this. We can have a second class. Again, I don't like these T, so I'll say imp, imp1. And uh, change input1. Actually, we could do this. We could say alpha. It just seems that seems more meaningful to me than using t. Because t I always found really confusing when I first kind of got into this. 
Okay, so this, this isn't going to work because we've got this mixture of the long and the float. Um, let's just check it still works with, you know, that back of the float should still work perfectly. There we go, lovely jubbly, looking fine. Um, however, we can add a second class in here. What we can do is we can say class beta and change this to beta. And now, yes, we will return the first thing that's called, and that's the first element must be uh, the same as what we want returning, but the second thing can be anything else. So if I, as long as I want a float back in answer, the second thing can be anything, because beta will just adapt. So I could make that a long, run that, no problem. We're getting back a float. We're sending in a float and a long. It can be an int. There we are, no problem there. Um, one problem we will have, of course, is if we make this one the int and this one the float. Because um, Alf, be because the first number in we're sending in is an int, so that's an int, alpha gets turned into an int, so we return an int, so we return this uh, integer 40. So that's just one thing we've got to be careful. The kind of way I do it is you always make the more complicated thing the first thing and then the, the less complicated thing the, the second thing. So if we want the proper answer back again, just change these round. Obviously I'm hacking a fair bit here. Okay, so this should now come back as, uh, oh, what have I done there? Oh yeah, int, sorry. Uh, this should come back as 40.16. Super, there we go, we've got the answer back. Because alpha is being turned into an, a float. So we get a float and a float. And n2, which is an int beta is being turned into an int so no problem there anyway I think that's probably a pretty good introduction to uh, again again just just to finish off often in real code you will see or other people's code you will see T and you will see you here uh, but I just you know and also as well just just to make it really funky You'll often see this as well. X, Y. So that should work. There we go. Um, but to me, that's starting to to just be obfuscation for the sake of obfuscation. But purists would, would want to beat me up and hang me off a tree for, for doing anything else. But that's the kind of thing you will see, T and U. You do whatever it takes to float your particular boat. And, you know, I do much prefer something where I can kind of get more of a handle on what's going on with it. So I would have something a bit more like this. Also better named uh, variables here. So, so you do whatever it takes to make your world work. Uh, I should imagine in many places it will be the, the formal T, U, X, Y kind of notation. But I just much prefer that notation. Anyway, that's the beginning. That's the beginning of templates. Um, a beginning of functional templates. See you next time.